Hello, this is Javier. I'm going to review Waterfox today. Waterfox is a fantastic new plugin that offers no telemetry, limited data collection, and PAPI plugins, bootstrap add-ons, Polish user Chrome stable API. It offer, it's pretty much a Firefox clone based on the Gecko uh, development kit. It's compatible with Firefox. All your add-ons will be there. All your um, synchronization will work. Your password, everything will work, right? So right now, I'm a little concerned, or what I have noticed in my computer is that when I use Chrome, it, it tries, it uses too much RAM, and I don't necessarily like that um, because I've noticed other browsers are uh, better, right? So in my uh, work, um, sometimes I might have one account uh, with Microsoft uh, for my work. Let's say client A, client B, I might use another uh, login. So I, I got tired of logging in and out. So I started testing every single browser that I have and I really like the setup that I have. Now, I'm gonna show very briefly um, how to install Waterfox. Um, so essentially what I like to do is I, I try to Google Waterfox and the AUR. The reason why I do this is because when I started searching for Waterfox, I realized that it's um, there's a lot of different alter alternatives. So um, there is a Waterfox Classic and Waterfox uh, G G3, which stands for third generation now. What you wanna do when you have too many options with uh, Arc-based uh, Linux is first look for the one that has Orphan, right? So we know we're not gonna use this one, right? Waterfox Classic Git. Now there is a misconception that if I download everything from Git, I'm always gonna have the latest and greatest. That that's absolutely not true. On Arc, you have to kind of know where to download your sources. That's why Arc is such a fantastic distribution. It really, wants, helps you build a Linux that you want, but you want to avoid, for example, this guy, Waterfox out of date, right? Now, um, I did a little bit of research and the two that I like the most is Waterfox uh, Current, uh, which is um, the based on the previous version of Waterfox and the third generation, right? So the third generation is the one that I'm interested in, one, and even then I have three options. I have KPE, so this is for KDE, so I don't need that. So now I have two options, Waterfox G3 bin, and I also have Waterfox G3 git. So since I'm not sure which one I should choose, what I like to do is I like to go to the ARC, uh, for example, here for Waterfox G3 git. Now, first thing that I do is I look at the popularity, I look at the, when's the last updated, and then I click here when it says view package build. Now, uh, um, an ARC based distribution, you're gonna do a lot of custom compilations, so you need to get familiar with how uh, ARC works. Now, here the reason why I'm not choosing Git is because if you go and you search for source, it'll download from github.com slash Mr. Alex94 slash Waterfox. I would rather download this one at the beginning um, because this one downloads from waterfox.net releases Linux 64 installer, right? So this is like the official one that I have. Now Waterfox was purchased by a company in California called System One. Uh, their website is waterfox.net. So we're gonna go and proceed and install. So the one that we're going to install is waterfox g3.bin. Now I already, already installed, so I'm just gonna redo it so you guys can see. Now, installation was pretty simple. You do want to download the binary already so you're not spending half an hour um, rebuilding and recompiling of this massive thing. Now, after the sources are ready, you're gonna have a package called Waterfox, um, Waterfox G3 bin, right? I'm sorry. Waterfox G3, yeah, that's the one, Waterfox G3 bin. And then uh, when I look at that package, I'm gonna search for the binary that I have. Where's my binary? Uh, sorry, Q L. Waterfox. Pacman. So I'm gonna see what are the files that this package has, right? So this is my main binary is here user being waterfox g3 so pretty much this is my binary now this is a custom uh, dwm version we're going to talk specifically about this uh, what i like to do in the window manager it's i like them to make sure the floating windows 
are floating, I like to use fake full screen, I like to uh, swallow in the terminal, there's a lot of things that I'm going to do here. So um, I'm going to upload these the, in DWM um, for public consumption soon. I'm working on the final details. So essentially what I have here is uh, I have a plugin called fake full screen, which essentially I'm going to show you how it works. Essentially it will fake a full screen based on how many tiles you have. So for example, I want to launch the center master uh, layout. So that pretty much means that I'm only working on the tile in the center. Now I'm going to start adding a little bit of borders here. Okay, so then that's how I usually browse my web. Um, so when I have here a fake full screen, uh, what I did, I added Waterfox, so it has the fake full screen here. So this is the Waterfox, this is the binary that I have. So what, what happens here is like when it detects the Waterfox class, then it will launch a fake full screen. Now, I also launch uh, about Firefox so then if we go to the beginning of this line when you see the name of the program about Firefox it, it will show in a floating right and then I also did a I also did like um swallow so pretty much uh, when you put here no swallow zero that's a double negative that's one that means swallow right so I'm gonna show how swallow works um, this is Swallow, essentially instead of launching a whole new um, binary, what it does, it will kind of launch the application and Swallow it, right? So this is uh, Waterfox, and this is the floating window that we have. And then I'm going to demonstrate how fake full screen works. So fake full screen basically means that you go to YouTube or any website that you like, and let's say that you want to just um, read about it or if you're watching a video or something so you press I'm gonna start a screen grab so when you start screen grab then you're gonna press F11 and then you will see that it has a very nice effect it'll use the full screen quote unquote but it's not all your full screen it's just the full screen that from that specific tile right I also map Waterfox so it launches with the Super W. So if I uh, launch Super W, it will launch Waterfox, right? So then that's why I have Super W for Waterfox. I have Super FF for uh, Firefox. So Firefox Super FF, Waterfox Super W. Uh, I'm going to close the other uh, tiles, right? So now I just have Waterfox and Firefox. Now you barely know which one is which. Uh, the one Waterfox is the one here on the left. Firefox is the one here on the right. Um, and the reason why I really like Waterfox and Firefox is because I've noticed they use less RAM than Chrome. I always thought Chrome is super fast, it's the best, and, and for many years I used Chrome. However, I've recently noticed that Chrome uses like more resources than I would like to. Like it, it, it's always using more resources. Now in my computer, I have uh, numerous um, browsers. So I have uh, I have U Launcher. So when I launch U Launcher, I have Opera, I have Waterfox, I have LibreWolf. I LibreWolf is also uh, based on uh, Firefox. I have uh, Vivaldi and then I have uh, Chromium. So from all these browsers, uh, what I've seen is that Google Chrome is the one that uses the most amount of resources. So anyway, I hope you guys like the video. This is um, completely compatible with Firefox. You'll see all my extensions are there. If I want to like turn off uh, dark mode, uh, let, let's say I want to go to Wikipedia. So if I go to Wikipedia here, I would go to Bill Gates uh, for Wikipedia. Then I can turn off uh, dark mode, right? Um, so it works just like if it would work on uh, Firefox. So if I copy this URL and go to Firefox, everything would work the same. I uh, it's, Everything is linked to my Firefox account, so all the plugins downloaded automatically. So I'm going to turn off uh, dark mode here. Um, so everything is the same like they're they're both really good the reason why I like to have two browsers is because um, 
I might be working with client A, so that will be on my left window. I might be working with client B, that guy would be on my right window on Firefox. I don't want to log in and log out again. Um, with Microsoft, especially, it's extremely annoying that they want to call you, verify you, you're in the middle of a meeting, you don't want to close the meeting, then pick up your phone, then push uh, pound. <laughs> Uh, logging in and out of uh, Microsoft every single day is becoming like a major headache. So I would rather have one browser just for, let's say, client A. So for example, I have a job interview tomorrow. I'm going to use this browser, Waterfox. I can log into Teams. It's a Teams meeting. I can use my custom personal private Microsoft account ID. And then on the browser on the right, which is my normal Firefox, uh, I can go ahead and go to Teams and then I don't have to log in and log out again. So there, there's a lot of benefits of using multiple browsers. I'm trying a lot of them. I really like configuring how all of them should work on a tiny window manager. And then uh, if you see uh, Firefox is also using the fake full screen. So they're both using fake full screen. They're both, uh, they both have a different... Um, based on the same technology, but they're completely different browsers. I tested on Netflix, HBO Max, uh, YouTube. I tested on Zling. Uh, it's pretty much a clone. I really, really enjoy it. I think uh, these are going to be my two main browsers starting today. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you tomorrow.